Thank you for listening to The Mentor Project, where we discuss marketing, SEO, how to go full-time in your business, and so much more. Here's your host, Nicole Bruce. You guys know how much I use Dubsado and how it runs my business and how I usually say it wrong, but this episode is not a promotional one. We aren't just going to sell the CRM to you. Instead, we're going to talk about Dubsado as a company and how insanely successful they've been and how they did it so fast. How when someone asks what CRM to use, the comments flood with Dubsado and why that happens. Today, we're diving into one of the top CRM companies in the industry. Joining me today is Joey, one of the lead customer service support members and a member of Dubsado since the beginning. Joey, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate uh, reaching out and uh, I'm happy to be here. To start us off, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Dubsado. Yeah, so uh, basically I am a head of business development and sales here at Dubsado. Uh, I've been with the company for a few years and um, back then they probably had around eight or nine employees. Uh, Dubsado in general is is a business tool, uh, a client management system, or some people might call it a CRM. And our goal really is just to provide like a comprehensive sort of all-in-one tool uh, for business owners to run the entire back end of their business. So anything with regard to like invoicing, uh, let's say contracts, and uh, what we love particularly is automation. So especially, for example, if you are like a solo entrepreneur or let's say like a designer, um, understandably, you want to be focusing on design and not having to worry a lot about a lot of your day-to-day admin work. So uh, we're looking to help business owners in that regard so they can just pay attention to the things that they love doing without having to worry too much about the the nitty-gritty details and all the things in between. So, Yeah, so you've been on the team for quite a while. So what do you help the team with usually? So, um, you know, when I actually first got to Dubsado, there was actually no sales department. It was actually comprised of uh, just uh, a handful of devs and then a customer support team, which kind of facilitated a lot of the the front end support for people that have like troubleshooting questions. So really sort of understanding and interpreting Becca and Jake's vision, which is a co-founder, and just sort of the, mm-hmm. the psyche of the company as a whole. It was kind of... I had to kind of build a bit of a a roadmap for our sales strategy and just making sure that part specifically was authentic to the brand. Um, So, yeah, you know, just kind of understanding our place in the market and and helping uh, different types of businesses, groups, organizations uh, pretty much see how their business needs can kind of fit in the mold of Dubsado. Uh, Now we have a team of salespeople, which is really nice, and and they're all incredible and uh, on a day-to-day level, we do something along the lines of that. We're able to really meet with businesses and and talk with them uh, very candidly. You know, I'm always, this is something just as a general rule for us and the company that we do want to be as like transparent and forthcoming as possible. So um, there are times, you know, when we're talking with businesses, well, we might refer them elsewhere and it does also pay off because they might require or they might recommend their colleagues to us. And that's nice because if you really just, if you get to know somebody on a very human level, uh, you don't really want to force something on them. And, you know, we were a niche product and we still kind of are. So um, just being forthcoming and transparent and, and understanding, you know, because this is not the type of software really where you're using it for like fun or leisure. You know, if it is your business that you're using this to run, um, you're trusting us with your livelihood. And that, that's not something that we take very lightly. So uh, we're grateful for our clients. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much what we do. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that because the way I run my company, uh, White Fox, we work with brides and it's, we're, we're not necessarily running their lives, but we're running a a big day in their lives. That's a huge day. (laughs) Um, uh, And we're the same way with them. You know, if they don't, they aren't a match with us, we'll just say like, hey, you know, that's not really what our company is about and there's nothing wrong with what you want, but let's go ahead and refer you to someone else that that can help you a little bit more and um, be closer to what you envision. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm such a proponent of that. That's just such a good philosophy because it's honest. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And there's there's so many people 
Um, and so many businesses that are run just by let's make the sale. Like it doesn't matter what it takes. Let's make the sale. And, um, that personal way of running your business makes sales for you. And all you have to do is really just talk to people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So as you kind of mentioned before, the software is pretty niche. Uh, it, it is a product designed for small businesses and owners to give them organization. And that's not something you see everywhere. You know, there's not a ton of companies that do that. So I love that you guys have that one main focus, yet the company itself is very successful. So can you talk about how things kind of came into shape in the beginning stages of Dubsado and why being so niche has actually worked out and been super beneficial for you guys? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, um, credit where credit is due. I definitely have nothing to do with the origin of the company. Um, The co-founders are actually husband and wife. Um, Becca, who is by trade a photographer, primarily wedding photography, and then her husband, Jake, who is a web developer. And she at the time, and this this was quite a few years ago, um, she wasn't quite satisfied on a personal level with like the types of tools that were available that were in any way conducive to like a small business owner. Um, Like in comparison, if you were to look for like a really comprehensive suite like Salesforce or HubSpot, those are like industry titans, but they sort of lend themselves to large enterprise. So if you're like a company of 100 people or something crazy like that. So what Becca was looking to do was through her lens and her eyes, uh, no pun intended, um, and Jake, she really wanted to collaborate with him and design and develop a tool that she felt that. Uh, at the time, wedding photographers just like her would would really sort of benefit from and and what are all those little tidbits here and there and mm-hmm. you know over time, you know it really does kind of cascade so I, I would still consider us niche in the small business space, but uh we've been fortunate to kind of witness how other industries have really adapted and and supported Dubsado. Um, as of late, we, we have quite a bit of uh, people who are in and around the design space. Uh, we have all sorts of consultants and uh, surprising, but but fortunately, we, we have even uh, different types of accountants and law firms that use it, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like what, what allowed us to be so, uh, I guess, successful in, in kind of scaling vertically was uh, on... In their words, they wanted to provide what they call sort of enterprise level solutions for the everyday business. And they wanted to sort of make that bridge between what you can expect from like an extremely great software that has everything you need, but also pay attention to things that maybe other softwares don't like aesthetic and branding and customization and just all the little tidbits there. So staying niche is definitely what's helped us grow. And even as we expand into different industries um our ears are really really towards the you know our user base or feet are always two feet on the ground because we want to always accept feedback like a lot of people really um a lot of people provide really good feedback for better or worse whether it's positive or negative and that's something that we take extremely closely with us because uh, a lot of the tools that we implement over time are a direct result of photographers and designers and wedding planners all letting us know like, hey, this would be great if you implement this. So it really is just a matter of knowing what your overall vision is, but you can't ever ignore the needs and, and you know, the, the wants of your clients. So Yeah. And that's so cool because a lot of people think that if you have a slimmer vision or a slimmer market, you know, like having software specifically to help people organize their business is pretty it's a pretty narrow idea, but it actually applies to so many people. And, and people think that, Hey, if I have a narrow idea, you know, it's probably not going to do very well. Um, but that's basically the opposite of true because, um, (laughs) you know, it, it applies to everyone. And even though it's a really specific idea, everyone needs that solution in their lives. 100% 100% agree. And I, I think that can lend that particular idea is applicable to a lot of things. Like, uh, for example, like if you're a content creator and you're on YouTube, if you want to create like a daily vlog and no one really knows who you are, no one's going to be able to really uncover that. But if you start really small, if you're like a raving fan about something that's super particular, 
people that love whatever that is will organically search for it. So it is kind of like a, you would think that it would work if you be more broad, but as specific as possible, um, at least in the very beginning is definitely the, the better route. Yeah, for sure. So do you know, whenever Dubsado was started, did they have competitors yet in that market? Or was it just a completely unique invention that they came up with? There were definitely competitors. I mean, like the CRM space is not something that is new particularly, Mm -hmm. but the CRMs in particular that uh, are more conducive towards like small business owners, particularly in the creative space, uh, there were a couple of players like, you know, you have your honey book and your 17 hats and they have their own origin stories and sort of mantras and things of the sort. But um, I'd probably say those are the two most uh, most closely associated competitors, if I'm to be frank. Um, but no, it, it's definitely not a new idea. They just wanted to um, they, they wanted to add their own flair and their own value to it, you know. Cause you know how, um, like generally speaking in business, it's like you look at companies and the ones that are great doesn't necessarily mean they like pioneered a new industry. Like, um, I guess a really corny example is like Apple didn't invent the computer, but they made computers really cool, you know? So it's like, (laughs) so it's, that's kind of like their philosophy. They felt like if they, if they sort of built it with the proper TLC and with the right intentions in mind, then uh, there would be a bit of a leg up there. Yeah. And that was kind of the point that I wanted to bring up was just because somebody already invented it doesn't mean that you can't come out with your own version. Because, you know, even though there are industry leaders, there's always items and certain aspects to that product that you can fix and improve. Because like you said, a lot of big companies, especially, I mean, the bigger they get, it seems the less they listen to their their customers and um, the less they're kind of in tune with what's going on and what suggestions have been made and stuff like that. But when you have a vision for something and you want to bring the best of both worlds in, you know, good things that they're already doing, but then bring in other things people are suggesting and they might be overseeing. That's really kind of yeah. how you make the ultimate business right there. Yeah, that's how, that's right on the money. I, I mean, I, I agree with that for sure. Yeah. So obviously, like we've kind of talked about, there are competitors. How do you think Dubsado kind of rises above those competitors? What do they use as their competitive edge? That's a, that is a, a very good question. And, um, you know, at first it, it wasn't so apparent to me when I first joined, but like when you really, really get to know Dubsado at like a core level and, and uh, especially how we've grown over time, there, there are probably two different factors. Um, one of them is like speed. And, and what I mean by that is more so like with a business tool, there are specific circumstances that people will need a specific, uh, let's say update or feature for. So, sort of pairing with the fact that they're very responsive with feedback, our development team is really quick on the punch. I think especially if you use a software for quite a few years, you can really tell when something stagnates and like nothing is being worked on or updated or improved. So um, our ability to move quickly, it it really sort of helps us have this palpable energy in the the ecosystem because, um, and, and there are different factors that, that are caused by that. Like I can understand if a competitor, for example, is, uh, is venture backed, let's say they have some venture capital money or they have like angel investors. There's understandably people that they need to get like the check of approval from in order to proceed with like a certain decision. Mm -hmm. Um, what Jake and Becca did is, um, a lot of people find this uh, surprising. Sometimes myself too, but uh, we're a fully private, uh, privately owned company. So uh, there's no sort of board of investors. It's sort of like if Jake and Becca and our whole team decide this would be great for our community, we can act like as soon as possible. We don't have to wait on any kind of approval or vetting process or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, which I feel most strongly about is customer support. I feel like uh, especially with a software that does a bunch of things, the last thing that you really want to do is just leave the clients to their own devices to just figure it out on their own. Because it's honestly not like the most fun process, but it's obviously helpful once you put all the puzzle pieces together. Mm-hmm. So um, I would say the most competitive edge is just our ability to make sure that we are responsive and we're providing resources t- in multiple capacities for people that need help, especially during the setup phase. Like, 
We have like round the clock chat support. We have free consultation calls where we'll sit with you and we can build stuff with you. We can audit stuff with you. We can troubleshoot things. Our biggest philosophy more than anything really is if you are having any kind of trouble or hesitation, reach out in any one of these handful of ways and we want to help you make that process easier. And um, I think that's a, a huge burden off of a business owner's back because you want to get back to making sure your business runs fine, let alone having to like learn a new software and put everything together just helps to have people that can help you with that. So I would say those are the two. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't realize that customer service is actually a form of marketing and yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. That that's, we say this all the time. You took it right out of our, <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. And um, the best part about it is that it's free. You know, you don't have to pay anything <laughs> for it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we do the same thing with our clients. Uh, we're not for for my wedding company. We're not just there to like show up and take pictures. We're there. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of brides have no idea what they're doing because they've never done it before. Um, and you know, we've done hundreds, and so we can say you know, like, okay, this is how much time we should be here to, you know, for getting ready. And this is how much time we should be here for the ceremony and kind of like walk them through what to expect that day. And so anything that really helps your clients and goes above and beyond what your actual service is, is definitely yeah. a marketing tool and it's completely free. All you have to do is be really <laughs> yeah. nice to people. <laughs> yeah, and genuine. I mean, everything you just mentioned, I mean, there's a whole lot of love that goes into that preparation process. It's not just shooting a photo. Yeah. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you bring up small things like that because everything like that matters in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. So um, I did want to talk about uh, Dubsado and I feel like the company has literally exploded in the past few years <laughs> um, because I've been with you guys for a while. Um, so what do you think con contributed to that fast growth? Do you think it was the customer service mostly or were there some other things going on too? So customer, it's funny because like, um, you know, keeping it all the way real at, at first, like at, like version one, beta one of our software, we didn't really have any differentiating factors, but customer support was always the like, you know, if not for anything, they're really stellar at helping us set yeah. up. And then over time, when we sort of built our team around that same philosophy, even the developers really understand like, you know, customer support at the end of the day is paramount. Mm -hmm. So it is customer support. And then sort of touching on what I spoke about earlier was, um, maintaining that dialogue with your audience or in our case with your clients and understanding that like their needs and concerns come from like a really sincere place because you have these daily gripes as a business owner as a human so if you really listen to that and then you move in that way to help them and, and benefit them in, in like a very sincere way especially even with something small like a an added feature to like an invoice or something like that all those little things add up and really culminate in in what is hopefully the most ideal service. Um, so over time, I think it was just like staying true to who we are, understanding that we want to help people in the most sincere way and like never wavering with our ability to provide assistance. Like no matter how big we get, no matter how many clients that we'll, we'll have and, and are fortunate to have over time, that is really like our guiding light and the pillar that we stand on to make sure that we are like the best. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, when someone, you know, asked on a post, what is the best CRM software? Um, it usually it's blown up by Dubs Auto from like a million different people. Um, <laughs> but all of the reasons usually are, you know, their customer service is amazing. You can just chat on the website and they'll get back to you and like, two minutes and answer any question you have. And I also noticed from myself asking questions, if I like email in a lot of times, Becca herself will reply too. And so you're yep. like, Oh my gosh, like I'm People actually are talking surprised by that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's awesome. Um, and we do that the same in our company too. Like I talk to all the clients and I'm the CEO, but I still talk to every single bride 
on the phone. Um, and so basically to say, even if you have a massive company, it's so important to stay personal uh, with all of your clients and treat every single one as a unique aspect to your company. That's so true. I mean, I mean, I don't want to speak for Becca, but like, that is like, she has such tremendous like love and care for that aspect because she, she never wants to feel like she'd ever be out of tune with her audience. Cause she very much is like the demographic that she's looking to serve. So she never wanted to lose that, like that, that really like accurate feeling of what it, what it is like to try to operate a business, um, you know, as a small business owner and things of the sort. So like, um, yeah, I'm ranting, but essentially it's really important to her and she, for whatever reason, has never wavered from that. And I think that itself is, is a great uh, sort of trait on, on her behalf. Yeah, definitely. So talking a little bit about the future of the company, I'm not asking for any like crazy spoilers or anything, but um, <laughs> do you think the company is going to stay in the same aspect of, you know, customer service and staying on the CRM feature? Or do you think they're going to kind of branch off and do some other things too? At a core level, we're, we're always going to want to provide the same type of service. It's like we we want to stay true, but we don't want to necessarily stay put. So it's like uh, we have different industries that we feel like we'll be sort of beneficial to introduce Dubsado to. And it's actually one of the one of the hardest things from the can with you, Nicole, is making sure that if you grow into other avenues or service different types of businesses, in no way can you ever for a second drop the ball with your existing user base, especially like the mm -hmm. early adopters. So finding that balance is always the trickiest part, making sure that you're servicing both ends of the spectrum. Yeah, if anything, we, we want to scale horizontally into different sort of industries, perhaps, but it's still all very much on a small business level. We're going to provide the same types of tools and, and just make things uh, slowly but surely and incrementally better for everybody. So, um, yeah, there's no plans on selling the company. There's no plans on merging the company. There's no plans on providing a service that's like completely different. We do want to stay true to who we are, but uh, hopefully we can... Um, that itself can transcend the different types of businesses and, and organizations. Yeah, definitely. You guys have pretty much an endless amount of growth, I mean, with different uh, types of companies and stuff like that. So um, that is really nice. So obviously, Dubsado is really customer service oriented. And one thing that I actually noticed is that you guys have a Facebook group for all your users. So how do you kind of use that for marketing and just interacting with your client base? You know, if there was probably like the unsung hero of our growth in like an organic way, it's probably the power of Facebook groups. Um, we obviously have our own and it's, it's a great sort of collaborative space for people to just share their thoughts and their ideas, especially with people who are, you know, sharing the same industries with other users. And it's really become this sort of springboard for like, collective growth and thought and um, they're extremely active our user base and and our company uh, within our facebook group um, but just facebook groups in general if i'm to be honest like uh, uh, i would say maybe I, I can't really put a percentage on it but a good amount of our users if they didn't hear about us through some sort of traditional marketing which we don't really do that much of a lot of it actually comes from like, you know, um, I, I'm in this business mastermind Facebook group and I was just like, I need a CRM. And then I have a few people who recommended Dubsado. So Facebook groups, believe it or not, I feel like are such a powerful tool for people to make their recommendations. And, you know, there's there's a good amount of trust there because, you know, you never want to recommend something to other business owners that you don't genuinely feel is beneficial. And um, yeah, yeah. Our, our Facebook group at the moment, it's not really for like tech support or anything of the sort. We definitely recommend you just chat us, but it is a good way to sort of collaborate amongst our user base and have those users sort of share their experiences and their best practices and all the cool things that they're able to do. So uh, yeah, I would say it's probably one of our strongest things as a company is is the strength of our Facebook group too. Yeah, definitely. And once again, you guys are using free marketing sources. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, so many people, when they think of marketing, they're like, I don't have money to spend on that. And 
so much marketing is free. And um, so many people build out, I feel like they build out their businesses and they're like, I'm going to pump up, you know, pump in as much money as I can into marketing and into startup and et cetera. And you don't always have to do that. There's so many ways to get your name out there free. And, you know, you can do paid marketing and paid marketing is awesome. But if you're not ready for it up front, then don't put that money out for it. Find free ways to do it. Preach. No, that is so important because... I mean, also, like, if you are, a, like, a small business and, and you're sort of debating the ways that you want to be able to make yourself visible to your, you know, to your ideal clients, it's like, even if you were to save up a good amount of money and then dump it into, like, Facebook ads or, like, Google AdSense or something like that, there's something that is more sustainable about organic growth if it's from, like, a recommendation or, like, a referral or a Facebook mm-hmm. group. And that leads, at least in my opinion, to, like, a lower uh like or a higher i should say um retention rate so your clients will stay a bit longer because if you ran like a crazy promo and people got a a whole big sense of fomo and they're like i'm not quite sure what it is but i just want to sign up because this seems like a sweet deal naturally if they're not really fully in tune with like the value of your product they just hopped on board because of a marketing campaign you're gonna churn some clients there because it's not going to be as organic as like one of my trusted friends and colleagues literally told me to try this. So I think there's also a good benefit and it is a slow, slower, sometimes longer play, but it's more sustainable. And, and, and to your point, it is definitely free. You don't need to dump a bunch of ad money. Uh, that's not something that we've ever done. Um, we don't really run too much uh, traditional marketing, which is why a lot of people, if they're completely green to business ownership, they're like, I've never heard of you. And, and understandably so, you know, it is at the moment a very much on a referral basis still. Uh, we do here and there ads, but yeah, we're, we're really big fans of just, um, you know, marketing yourself in a way that seems like natural and uh, obviously cost sensitive. Yeah. And I love the point you bring up that people that come from ads aren't going to be knowing you as a brand. They're going to be knowing you as basically a number, like a price. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's so important too, because um, like people that come in, I have a two photography companies and Dang. my personal photography company, um, which is just me and my husband. Um, when people come in, they know us by brand. So they're like, we know you're awesome. Like we want to work with you versus when I run ads, it's how much do you cost? Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is not the right conversation. You're like, Oh, you're just price gouging. Like we haven't even talked yet. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so there's definitely a very, a very big benefit to branding yourself versus just like throwing out prices to clients. Yeah. I, I can't agree more honestly. Like, have you ever heard the saying, Nicole, it's like sometimes you're betting on the jockey, not the horse. It's like when you become a fan mm-hmm. of somebody, it's like even if they decide to have a second business like yourself, it's like, oh, I'm a fan of Nicole. So I want to support this business, even though it has nothing to do with me. And it's sort of like, you know, if you believe in the people behind the company, behind the curtain, then um, I, I think that st- connection is much stronger than just like, as you said, like an ad campaign where you're like a number or something like that. Yeah, definitely. So as we're kind of getting towards the end, what is your best advice for new business owners? Um, In a general sense, and I honestly do believe this, is this sort of like be kind to yourself. I feel like uh, there's no real roadmap to business ownership like there is to being like a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant or what have you. So when you're kind of piecing all the things together that you feel like will sustain and run your business, allow yourself to fail and fail fast and just make sense of what works for you because no two businesses are the same. You could have a best friend that has an identical business. He or she might run things a completely different way and that works for them. So at the end of the day, I feel like just understand who you are, be kind to yourself and um, don't be afraid to like fail fast and then pivot because that's really what will help you find that sweet spot of of things being manageable and growing and, and good and happy. So that's probably what I'd say. I think in the context of Dubsado, it's really just to, it's almost the same kind of advice. Not that I'm someone that, you know, needs to be given out advice, but uh, what I can say is um, 
especially when you're trying to learn like a tool or something, start small, understand just the pieces you need. Because sometimes people will say like, I'm not really sure what I don't know. And I'm always saying, what are the things, what are the three to four to five things that you know for sure are crucial for you? Start with that and sort of build upon that. Because a lot of the tools, even if it's not Dubsado, we do want to be like an all-in-one suite, but it's not the type of software where we would force you to like reinvent your process and use every single feature. Like really and truly identify specifically what helps you without making you want to pull your hair out essentially. And there's always that sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's such unique advice too, because most people, when I ask that question, they're usually like, oh, you know, this is a good way of marketing or, oh, this is a good way to set up your prices, you know, like very technical things. Um, but really taking care of yourself in both like knowing that it's not going to be an overnight process and knowing that there are going to be things that fail and it's fine because that's just how you figure out what works and taking care of yourself. I think a lot of people work you know, 80 hours a week uh, on their company and don't take into consideration self-care at all. And just really being kind to yourself in your business and in your personal life while you're still having this business as well. It's so important. Uh, At least I think so. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. So before we end, I want to ask a few fun questions to get to know you a little bit personally. Cool. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Cats or dogs? Dogs, no question. I'm a huge dog advocate, mute dog rescue, adoption advocate. I would love cats too, but like I'm I'm allergic, so that's a bit of a personal bias. I love all animals to be honest. Okay, yeah, it's reverse for me. I'm like super allergic to dogs. No. <laughs> it's very sad. No. <laughs> okay, uh favorite ice cream? Rocky Road, hundred percent. Okay, good pick. Hot dogs or hamburgers? I like hamburgers, yeah. Uh, hot yeah. dogs are cool just sometimes you're a little bit weirded out you're not quite sure what's in it so I, I'll oh go the hamburger <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay that was the best answer ever all right um okay so we have talked about a ton today not only uh Dubsado in itself but really just how it has came to be and how being very personal in your business is actually a marketing source, like we said before, and a free one at that. Um, And so we've gone over so much and it's been so amazing. So if we have any questions or if we want to check out Dubsado, where can we find you guys at? Yeah. So you can go just to Dubsado, D-U-B-S-A-D-O.com. And um, if you got questions, you can chat with us very candidly. You don't need an account to come chat with us if you have anything that's burning in your mind. Uh, yeah, come check us out. Start a free trial. It's not time restricted. And um, socials wise, uh, it, our handle on Instagram is my Dubsado. So um, please, I, I definitely do recommend you check us out in any capacity if you are a small business or perhaps you're thinking about creating one. But yeah, hopefully there's something there for you. And uh, we promise to to be as helpful as we can. Yeah, I love it. Go check them out, guys. So feel free to use the code WANDERLUST for a discount on your subscription. And Joey, thank you so much for coming on with me today. Yeah, yeah. No, I, honestly, we're, we're really grateful for the opportunity. And obviously, you've been a user for quite some time. So uh, yeah, thankful for, the, for just everything. Thank you for uh, having us. And hopefully, uh, this is going to offer some sort of gem for your listeners. Yeah, we went over a lot and a lot that is vital and just free information for how to really build your business and build your brand, you know, without paying thousands of dollars on marketing. Um, So that was awesome. It was so fun. And to everyone listening, thank you guys so much as always. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to The Mentor Project with Nicole Bruce. Tune in next time for more on marketing, SEO, and going full-time as a creative.